Let's back up here. Let's back up here for a minute for, for big picture stuff. There's going to be three M's here, those of you that are taking notes. Three M's. The first one is, this is mobile. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What's the difference between a piece of land that we call, we look at that piece of land and say that's a farm, as opposed to a piece of land that we say, well, that's a park, a wilderness area, a theme park, a condominium complex, a strip mall. Why do we call the farm a farm? What is it that's distinctive about land that we say that's a farm? I'm growing on it. Cleared area. Production, cleared area. Well, there's cleared areas in parks, and that's where you play badminton, right? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to be really I'm gonna be really hard on you here. Management. Producing food. Management, produce food. Well, you know, there's a whole lot of people in the park service managing all those parks. Why do we call it a farm? It sustains us instead of us sustaining it. Yeah, well, a lot of uh, environmentalists would say that uh, wilderness areas are more important to sustain us than farms, you know, so. I, I'm not trying to pick a fight here, trust me. I'm trying to get you to think to go a place with me. Anybody want to take another stab at it? Now you're all gun shy. <laughs> what? Produce food. produce food. Well, there's a lot of food produced in the... The trees have been cut. The trees have been cut. Well, some places don't have any trees. Yeah, some places don't have any trees. <laughs> a little strip mall gets taxed, or, or or privately owned land that's not a farm would get taxed. There is no difference. There's a fence around. Have a bunch of houses. Around. <laughs> fence around it. Fence around. There's a fence around prisons too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Say we always well, thought about you're right, ready for me to tell you. Okay. Yeah. A farmer. <laughs> what makes it a farm is what a farmer brings to that piece of property, brings to that table. Absent the farmer, <coughs> it could be any of the other things I described, from wilderness area to park to strip mall to expressway to, you know, uh, one of Donald Trump's casinos, whatever. All right? I like to mention people that are in the news lately. Okay. Uh, so, so it, it's a farmer. All right. <laughs> You know what the average age of America's farmers is? 62. 60, depending on who you're reading, we're from 62 to 59, whatever. Let's just say 60 for the sake of discussion. According to all Wall Street business analysts, healthy businesses, if you measure all of their employees, their the, the median age of all the employees of any thriving business there is a, an axiomatic tipping point in which analysts say that is a business that's in decline. When the median age of any business hits this age, then it's a business in decline. You may know what that age is? 35. 35, bingo. 35. Wow, we're old. <laughs> <laughs> I did a... I did a sustainability seminar for Nike Corporation up at their uh, headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon a few years ago. And just for fun, I asked the human resources gal, you know, what's your average worldwide? All Nike employees, you know, everybody in Asia, the all deal worldwide, 32. Okay? And it really brought it home. Farmers are, uh, we're a prehistoric lot. Okay? <laughs> One of the reasons I would suggest that this has occurred is because, well, there, there are numerous reasons, but one certainly is that the capital impediments to entry barricade young wannabes, penniless young people, from being able to enter, okay? And when the impediments to entry are so huge that young people can't get in, old people 
can't get out. <laughs> so both of them are trapped. Young people are desperate to get in. Old people are desperate to get out, but nobody can move because it's capital intensity. To the rescue comes the mobile farm. Okay? Because if a farm, if what a farmer has done to the land, if the farmer's contribution is mobile, the land becomes inconsequential. He can own it, lease it, squat on it, you know, whatever. All right. Um, you know, in, in Talamipas, uh, uh, Mexico, the big uh, the big park is mowed not with big bat wing mowers and a bunch of you know city employees running around on big mowers. There are six people that have some agreement. Now, who knows who knows how they got this agreement? You know, relatives, bribes, who knows what? But anyway, I'm not going to go there. But anyway, six people have an agreement to tether and run their milk cows through the park. And that's how the park stays mowed. I think that's really progressive. That's really cool. You drive down there, equivalent of our interstate, four-lane expressway, in the evening, and all along the expressway, farmers are going out and getting their Jersey cows, taking them in the milk, and then they come out and they move the tether stake, you know, 20 feet, and she gets that ring tomorrow, and they make sure it's just far enough away that she doesn't, can't get in the highway, right? So when you start talking about a mobile farm, suddenly the land ownership lessens in priority. All you have to do is be able to manage land. And according to all the land grant universities right now, because of this age out in the farming community, you ready for this? This is brand new, uh, I mean, in, in, in the history of civilization. In our country, in the next 15 years, 50% of our agricultural equity is going to change hands. Think about that. That's never happened in any civilization before. Only time that's ever happened in other civilizations is by conquest. You know, the Huns came in and took the road, whatever, okay? But it's by conquest. It's never been internal demographics that just, you know, moved it that direction. So we're in for some really exciting times. And I would suggest we are in, we are in some ways, in many ways, we are light years in a better situation, some people sit and pine for the, you know, the old homestead acts. And man, little Ohara Ingalls Wilder, be able to go out there, and if you could stay on your 100 acres with your 40 acres and a mule, you know, uh, then you could have it for free and all that. Well, you know, there wasn't any Papa John's pizza back then. <laughs> water, water was walking somewhere with a wood, wooden bucket, not a nice plastic five-gallon bucket to a. a I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take today. All right, that's fine. But we are entering a time of unprecedented land availability for management at the very time when land cost has completely divorced itself from productive capacity and value. Okay? So there is a lot of opportunity for people who know how to make beautiful landscapes on somebody else's place that wants it to be beautiful, all right? If you know how to make a beautiful landscape, you will never lack for land to be a part of, ever, okay? And so mobile infrastructure allows you to have complete portability across different kinds of lands, uh, uh, different kinds of places. These can go in a suburban backyard, they can go in a park, they can go in, a, in an agricultural easement that, that uh, Far American Farmland Trust or Nature Conservancy has tied up. They can go, they can go um, as, as partners in a cattle, uh, uh, a beef, dairy, sheep, orchard, grain farm. There's not a, there's not a farm in the country that can't stack this on top of it, under the trees, on the edge of a field. Goodness, 
out in Nebraska and Kansas, the center pivot irrigations. If, if you put these in all the corners of the center pivot irrigation, you could have a full-time farm salary running this deal. All those wasted corners, okay? Mobile. Ready for the second M? Modular. Modular. If you want to raise one chicken for Tyson, what's the first thing you have to do? Build a house. And it ain't a cheap house. It's like a three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar house. I call that an impediment to entry for a young person. I mean that makes that makes uh, college uh, college loans uh, seem inconsequential, doesn't it? So one of the so one of the beauties of, of this is that it's modular. So you can start with one and you can cash flow the second one, cash flow the third one. So you can, you can seamlessly scale up or scale down however you want to do it, and it doesn't break the bank. It's, it's, it's mobile that way in scale So because you can add pods, you can add modular, all right, because these things are cheap, and, and you can add them as much or as little as you want. So it's modular, makes scalability very different. And the third M is its management intensive and this of course is where everybody jumps off the cart oh yeah yep too much labor too much labor way too much labor well uh, I thought I thought it was good to employ people <laughs> is that not a good thing <laughs> give people something thing. meaningful to do <laughs> give something uh, important stuff to do somebody so what we've done here, and I make no, no apologies for it, we have traded, we have traded capital intensive stationary infrastructure, concrete, fans, you know, Tyson chicken houses. We have traded that capital intensive infrastructure and energy intensive infrastructure and pharmaceutically dependent infrastructure. We have traded that for what Wes Jackson calls eyes to acre ratio. Okay, so our observational and managerial expertise displaces the pharmaceuticals and the highly capitalized stationary infrastructure of the industry. And I submit that that is a fair trade. That is a fair trade. So I'm not going to sit here and argue, well, this takes more labor to raise a chicken than Tyson does. But remember, here you're seeing all the labor. You're not seeing a bunch of pharmaceutical companies and, the, and, and all of the, the field support team. We even process them ourselves. You're not seeing all the processing workers. Okay. This is a completely self-contained uh, uh, deal. Okay, except for the chicks from the hatchery. But other than that, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly self-contained. And so, yes, this does put more workers or labor on the farm. But what an office. <laughs> How many people would love to trade their, their expressway Dilbert cubicle commute? For this. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't make an altar call here. <laughs>